John 14. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to give you some th revelation today, some information and some ideas from the Lord out of John 14. <clears throat> While you're still turning there looking, the Lord kept saying to me and speaking to me as we were worshiping the Lord that you know it, he wants to be glorified in the earth in our lives what well, we need to understand that that's not an ego trip on God I heard somebody ask me about that one time has God got a big ego he's got to be worshipped that you know to be, for God to be glorified, the word is actually is a manifestation of his presence. And he wants to be manifested in his people and for his people and for the earth because he's the only answer there is. He created life. He, he's the only source of life and he, uh, he's the healer of life. He's the giver of life. So therefore, he, he needs to be glorified or manifested in the earth in our lives. He wants to be because that, that is what heals us, is the manifestation of the presence of the Lord in us and with us. Anything less than that is just cheap. Death, it's, it's, it doesn't fulfill. So God is, the Father is saying He wants to be glorified in us and but the question came to me, how can he be glorified if he's not honored as father in his people? Not recognized as father and honored as father. Okay, so it's important that we think about those things. I'm going to talk to you about, just for a few minutes, about a place for you. A place for you. Think about that for a moment. John 14, starting in verse 1, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Now we could spend a long time just on that phrase. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. But think about this. God is saying this. The Lord is saying this. This is just not somebody's opinion. The Lord is saying, Let not your heart be troubled. Obviously there's a way for which our heart could not be troubled as there is a way for our heart to be troubled. Okay? But it says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in the Father God. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Verse 2. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. I know your, your translation probably uses the word mansion which is a real misconception by many people, but um, mansion is nothing, nothing but a house, a place to live. Okay? Think about that. Just to let that mind think on that. I know everybody's fleshly lusting after a big house, but that's, he said, I'm in my, father's, in my father's house. There's many rooms, many dwelling places. This is not about your house or my house. It's about the Father's house. Can you just see that right here in this scripture? This is not about a mansion over in the corner of glory land. This is about the Father's house. In my Father's house are many dwelling places, many places, many places, many places. Think about the in my Father's house. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. Hear that. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I'm going to come and receive you to myself. That where I am, you will be. I know it's a little difficult to start thinking about this 
Because you've always heard this talked about heaven. That's not what it's talking about, actually. But I want you to hear this truth. Don't get upset. Just listen. (laughs) I want to help you today. There's a place for you. There's a place for you. And Jesus said, I'm going to come and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And so Thomas asked him what... You know, about the way to this place. And Jesus said, I am the way. I'm the way to this place. I'm the truth. And I'm the life that takes you to this place. I would like for you to just think for a moment. If you can get your brain to think about this and your heart to listen. That God is actually saying something to us now, today about who we are and where we are in this life that we're living on the earth. Could you think about that just for a moment? You you can put all the other stuff on the shelf and just think, I'm not going to attack all that. I'm not trying to attack something. I'm trying to show you something. That God has a place for you. It's called redemption. It's called salvation. It's called the kingdom of God. It's a place in which we are now invited to come into and live. Jesus actually said in John 15, that place is me. Abide in me. If, if If you live in me, because this is what salvation is, is living in me, Jesus would say. And Jesus living in us. And that's the reason I said salvation is not a thing. It's not a commodity it's not having your name on a piece of paper. And here's, it's not a ticket to go somewhere later. This is not about later. This is about right now. We, our salvation is something that comes to us today, now. Today is the day of salvation, not later. Today is the day of salvation. And we're, we must move into the house of the Father. The world is... It's actually God is letting us see something if we just hear it. The world is crying out for help. What they call the trans movement is a cry for people to be transformed. They want to be changed. People are trying to identify for certain why? Because they're trying to find who they are. Who am I? What am I? Don't be a snooty religious person who sits around and judges. Oh, well, sorry. They're looking for help. We're supposed to be praying and sharing the gospel. The way you find out who you are is to find yourself in Jesus. He is your identity. You find out who, what life is about. The transformation you're looking for is the transformation in Christ Jesus to be transformed into His image. That's the, that's the cry of the heart and God is letting us see that. But we also see today there's an epidemic of homelessness. People are homeless. Even a lot of people living in houses are homeless. Because our home is the Father's house. And many believers, many church people, are not living in the Father's house. It's obvious. They're still outside the Father's house, struggling with the, in the foreign land, trying to make the foreign land work, trying to make life work outside the Father's house. Still trying to feed themselves with the things the world is feeding on, never satisfied. Still empty, but belonging in the Father's house. The son, the prodigal son came to himself. And that's what I'm praying. Oh God, help us to come to ourselves. And see where we belong because you have prepared a place for us. If we know that we have a place, then we do not wander around aimlessly in life like a pinball in the machine. If you ever played, some of you don't have any idea what a pinball machine is. 
It's, it's, that, that happened a long time ago. But a pinball machine, when, when that, you know, you pull the lever and then hit, shoot the ball up and, it, and you got the little levers and, and it comes down and you keep pressing the little levers. And that's the way many people are living because every time you feel like you're going somewhere, here comes another lever. It pops you over here and you go up here and you go there. And, and, and the world is just knocking people around who's supposed to be stable, who's supposed to be saved, who's supposed to have eternal life. But why are they being knocked around? They hadn't moved in the Father's house. I would think that's one of the big reasons that they haven't moved into the Father's house. They don't live in the Father's house. So they're always wandering around, wandering around, place to place, trying to find security, trying to find help, trying to find direction, and caught up with the same spirit of the world, trying to find out, who am I? And I'm, you're supposed to be God's people in Christ Jesus. That's the reason that in Christ Jesus we're made new creations. In Christ Jesus, real salvation is being in a fellowship, a living fellowship with Christ Jesus as, and God as our Father. That's real salvation. That's the kingdom. And that we're no longer strangers and exiles, and aliens, but we are, I mean, we are that in the world, but we're not that way with God. We are in God's house. We're living out of the house of the Lord. Please hear that. I know that is so simple. Living in the Father's house and living out of the Father's house. Jesus said, in my Father's house. See, if you, don't, if you don't realize that, you don't understand now that Jesus has a place for you and He's prepared it and He's going to come and receive you to Himself. That our life no longer belongs to us. We have been received by Jesus unto Himself. I know the emphasis has been, and, and I understand that, that people need to make to receive Jesus. Make a, a decision. Make a confession of faith. What good is all of that if you don't come unto Jesus? There's a lots of people who have made a confession of faith, prayed the prayer, but they have never been, they have never come to Jesus and they don't live in the Father's house. They're just Flopping around, just meandering around from here, place, that place, whatever. They never, they don't even know who they are. Looking for identity. Looking to be transformed. Homeless. God is calling us to Himself. Seeking us. Calling us. Because He's building His house. That's what he said in Matthew 16 when, when uh, Peter and Jesus were talking and he, G, Peter described, you're the Son of God. You're the Messiah, Son of God. He said, that's been revealed to you by my Father. This is how God built His house, by the way. He reveals things to people in their heart, in their mind, in their spirit, out of, out of His Word. And that revelation causes us to come alive, born of the Spirit, come alive in the Spirit. By the way, you never see if you don't look. <laughs> That's profound, isn't it? <laughs> you don't see, you don't find unless you're seeking. While many people are teaching you try to try to be secure in the sense of just settle down, settle down, just be secure, just sit there, sit there. God is saying, get up. There's more to this. And in your heart you know there is. I believe in every person's heart, even though that you've had a great experience with God, or maybe a very little experience, you know there's more, and there is more. God has more for each of us. He's calling us. He's prepared a place for us. We don't have to feel like that I don't fit in. I don't fit into the world, 
but I, I do fit in with God. That's what we ought to know. I fit in with the Lord. Religion continually tells us how we don't fit in, how we're disqualified, how we're not worthy. Don't believe that lie. Don't believe that spirit. Because in Christ Jesus, His blood and His resurrection made us acceptable to the Father. And we, have to, we need to take hold of that and believe that. You remember Jesus said that when the Son of Man comes, will He find faith in the earth? See, that's a question. It's not will He find people believing stuff because people believe stuff all the time, even the Bible. But it doesn't make them alive in the Lord. Will He find faith? Will He find anybody that He can talk to that will hear His voice? Will he find anybody seeking his face? There's such a spirit of deception, illusions and lies that have numbed people spiritually. Pray, Lord God, help us to see this. Things that happen to us to dumb us down, to make us numb spiritually. And and that is... We're not sensitive to the Spirit because we're so preoccupied with stuff. Here we go. One of the greatest preoccupations is our is our cell phone. It's like Nobody, very few people have time to hear, be sensitive to God because they're always looking at their phone. Now, I think we need to ask, why are we doing that? What are we looking for? What are we searching? What, you know, just about everybody I know is in this room. And y'all don't call me. <laughs> Maybe if people quit putting their private business on Facebook, you wouldn't be looking in there to Peter and nosy. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> ah, well, anyway, <clears throat> got to find out. Got to why? Please understand. Now, don't, don't, don't today. As soon as somebody look at their phone, oh, I'll see you there. Don't be judgmental. And I'm trying to get you to understand something. How people are so preoccupied, mentally, emotionally, they don't, they can't hear the spirit. The devil set this up. You can't, can't hear the spirit because you know people are not quiet enough and in place. You have to be at a certain place at a certain time to hear God. That's the reason he talks about the secret place. Seek the Lord. It's important to do this. Not that you get brownie points and get better. More, you get more righteous if you read the Bible longer. No. We're trying to hear the Spirit of God. And in hearing the Lord, it cl- we've had to clean out, wash out the washing of the Word, our mind and our heart to listen to the Lord. Psalm 23 says, you know, he leads me not only to green pastures, but besides things were still waters. Actually, it means quiet waters. Waters that are not rushing. You know, we're so used to the rapids, we're not even, we're not even around still water. We want life to be like the, you know, going, riding that boat down the rapid, just you hollering and screaming, no, having fun, having fun. There's there's a place in God that you've got to get quiet. (laughs) He leads me by the still waters. Be still and know that I am God. See, when you in, are living in the Father's house, out of the Father's house, there's time to be still 
and quiet before God and listen. Because it's in hearing His Word that we're transformed and changed. Because the Spirit of God is, is building His house. Jesus said, I'm building my house. Paul tells us that, that we're living stones being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. I've got to hurry with this. All right, listen. Being built together as a dwelling place of God. If you take a living soil, you take a brick, if you're building, if you're going to build a brick house and you know, you're going to brick it, you don't just put one brick there, you put a bunch of them there. One by itself would be funny looking, right? It would be odd. There's got to be many there for it to be a... But we, we don't call it bricks house, plural, we call it brick. Right? There is a, or a brick wall. We don't mean there's just one brick. We mean there's a bunch of bricks. But they make one wall. We are living stones. We're, we're bricks in today's terminology, being put together for a single purpose. That, in the, that we would form the Father's house, in my Father's house, there's, many, there's a place for you. And my Father's house manifests the presence of Jesus. Now, Jesus said, abide in me. That took me to the scripture when he said that in my Father's house are many dwelling places and, I, and I'll go prepare a place for you and I'm going to come and receive you to myself. Salvation is knowing that you have been received by Jesus. You're dwelling with him. You're living in Jesus. Jesus is living in you. It's, it's, a, it's a tangible yet invisible thing in our lives, it's a place for you. Are you living in the Father's house? Or are you just rambling around living homeless? But it taught me to the scripture that there in, in Corinthians, when the scripture says the body is one but has many members. It's like the brick wall. It's a brick wall, but it has many bricks. Right? The body has many members, but it's one body. All the members are one body in Christ. It is by the Spirit that we are one body in Christ. That we become the house of God. That we're living in the house of God by the Spirit. We're made to drink into the Spirit. It says, in fact, the body is not one member, but many. Now listen carefully. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I am not part of the body. Now that has plagued the church. The real church. This is the attitude. That is, that the devil has been able to put in people's lives. It says, because I am not this, I'm not part. So people don't see themselves as important and valuable as a part of the house of God. And we've, we've created a, in the so-called church, we've created it such a as a production, it is something you attend instead of being a part of. But the real house of God, the Father's house, you can't attend the Father's house. You, you've got to be part of it. So don't fall for the lie that you're not important and you're not needed and you're not valuable because you're not this or not that. I'm not like so and so, and I'm not, praise God. You're not supposed to be like so and so. You know, the, the saying has been said if, if two of us were identical, one of us is unnecessary. Right? It's 
Don't compare yourself to somebody else. Let the Lord work in you, but be part of His house and feel like I'm part of the body. Because there are many dwelling places, there's many rooms, there's many parts of this house of God, all redeemed by the blood, all born again, all having the presence of God with us by the Spirit. But we're many members. Don't say I'm not part of the body because I'm not this, or as they said, I'm, I'm not a hand, or the, because I'm not an eye, I'm not part of the body, if the ear should say that. He said it's a choice. If you're always trying to feel like you've got to measure up, you can never feel at home. Hello? If we're always feeling like that we've got, we can't quite measure up to something, we can never feel at home. We can never feel like we're apart. We're always trying to get in, always trying to, always trying to make an effort. Well, I've got to do this, and I've got to do that. If you will understand that God has given you a gift of salvation in Christ Jesus and invited you into His house, just move in. Move in. Become, start living in the Father's house. Not in the world. Live in the Father's house. Nor do we take the opposite side. One says, I don't, I don't fit in. I don't, you know, and a lot of places you don't fit in. The way it's structured and the way it carries on and all the stuff that goes on, you don't fit in. But that's not important. What it is that you fit in with God. Fit in with His purpose. His will. But then there's the other side where uh, others are saying, well, I don't need you. Well, I don't need you. See, one of the enemy's attacks is to make you and I feel so inferior and worthless that we just barely show up to even get together. But the Bible teaches us that everyone is of equal value and importance in his house. We do different things, but that doesn't mean what one does is more important than what the other person does. You're, you're valuable. You're important to God. You're important to the body. God has gifted you. The Bible says that God sets the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleases. That's Jesus preparing a place for you. He has prepared a place for you. Could you hear this today? You haven't got to try to be like somebody else. Love Jesus and be a part of what He's doing. And if somebody gives a lot, that's, praise God for that. If somebody gives a little, Praise God for that. It's just as important. And in God's eyes of equal value if it's given out of the heart that loves the Father. We cannot say, I don't need you. Because the, the house of God, the real church, is a place for you and I to function, not attend is that we, have, we function in the house of the Lord. So do your part in loving and caring and praying for each other. Do your part. Don't get into, oh, I can't do much. Don't, don't just do nothing. <laughs> do something. I know in our culture we've made heroes and out of people and you know, they, they got to be in the spotlight and they got to be the, all of this and, and we keep look, trying to look up and, well, I just don't, we don't fit in and I don't measure up there. No, so and so, you know, because people want to be known as the men and women of God. If we only could see what God sees.
There should be no schism, no division, no strife within the body. Do your part. Do your part. I guarantee you that most of us have not even thought about praying for somebody else this week. We're too busy about trying to get ourselves fixed. But you can't get yourself fixed just focused on you. Do your part. Pray for each other. Love each other. Care for each other. Do that when we gather up. Don't just come in to sit down and just... That's all that your flesh and the enemy wants you to do. Start doing something to help people, encourage people. You say, well, I don't like, I don't like Brother Curtis. You don't even know Curtis. Maybe, maybe if you talk to him a little bit and loved on him a little bit, all the flaws you think he has could get well. I need to repeat that. Maybe the people you think are so sorry, if you just loved on them in the, a, a little bit with Jesus, maybe they could get well. And one last thing. Since God is forming His house, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 says, The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. Stop trying to impress people with your manifestation, but manifest the life of Jesus. You, you ain't got to go raise the dead. Just, just be kind to people. <laughs> be loving to people. Be encouraging to people. Start there. Build the house. Because Jesus said, I'm, build, I'm preparing a house my father's house. And I want you to understand that salvation gets you into that house while you're in the earth, while you're living in this life, gets you into that house now to manifest his life and to, for us to do his will together. Together, everybody. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one. I want you to expect God to work in you and through you this week. The manifestation of the Spirit to come out of you. In all that we do, Paul says, do for the glory of God. Here's the question. In what I'm doing, can God be manifested in what I'm doing and what I'm saying? Is God being manifested in my attitude? Wherever I am, is God being, can He manifest Himself? Can He manifest Himself in me? Wherever I am and whatever I'm doing, can God manifest Himself? Tough question? No. A real question. A place for you in Jesus. That's a place for you now in Jesus. Come to Him today. Okay? Let's stand up. I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Help me to see my place in you, in your house. In Jesus' name, amen.